We just thank you again for this time together, Father. We thank you for all your word that has come forth so far. And Father, we receive it. Father, we receive it by your spirit in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray that this time together will bear much fruit in our lives. And I come against the enemy that would try to steal anything that's already been said or anything that will be said in Jesus' name. Father, let the ears of our heart and our mind and every part of us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, y'all know I'm not going to stand up here. I'm always wandering around all over the place. The Word of God is a two-edged sword, separating, dividing, making things very clear to us. How many of you in here have ever cut a piece of meat? Now, what's one of the first things you want to do? Cut it with the grain? No. no. Why? It's going to come out tough and stringy. You always cut it against the grain. So when the Spirit of God has his sword, the sword of the Word is going to cut against the grain. Guess what? How many of you in here have ever had a C-section? All right, now we're getting personal. All right, Brother Roy, we have to have a meeting after the church service, and we're going to have a little chat. Yeah, I've seen one of them this past year, and I was like, no way. She's awake. Her guts, are, no, okay, we won't go into details. But seriously, they used to do C-sections top to bottom against the grain. Now they do them side to side with the grain of the muscle which is supposedly easier on the person. Cutting against the grain. When we read the Word of God, it should do something. It should change us. Sometimes it's going to cause a lot of pain going against the grain of what we're used to, what we really want to know. Oh, we're wonderful. We want to pat ourselves when we're reading the Word of God. But sometimes it cuts against the grain, and it hurts. But the sword of the Spirit of the Word will help us, will guide us, will show us what we need to do in our lives to prepare ourselves to be tender, tender, easy to chew, so to speak, for others. Sometimes if we don't let the Word of God cut the way He wants to cut, we won't be tender for other people. For, you know, like what, what Landy was saying, we're going to be, you just hurt my feelings. We want to run the other way. But let the Word of God change us from the inside out. Amen? How hungry are you for God? For God. I'm just kidding. <laughs> How hungry? <laughs> I'm hungry. How hungry are you for God? You know, sometimes we don't even realize what we're hungry for. How many of you have ever gotten out of bed in the middle of the night or right before you go to bed, you just, you're just hungry and you walk? Now, I really wanted to bring the refrigerator out here. But wisdom spoke, and I thought water dripping from the refrigerator would not be wise. I know the leadership appreciates me not doing that. But I pictured this refrigerator here, and me standing here with the door open, looking in this refrigerator, trying to find, well, let me look in the freezer. There's no ice cream. Go down here. What about a piece of cheese? You eat the piece of cheese. You throw the wrapper away. That didn't work. You're still looking. You don't know what you're looking for. You have to eat something, and you're trying to figure it out. All you know is you're hungry. But what are you hungry for? We have been created in God's image. Remember in Genesis, God created Adam and Eve in his image. Why were they created? For his pleasure, for his enjoyment. He couldn't have fellowship with the animals. They weren't created in his image. 
Have you ever tried to walk up to a fish at the aquarium through the glass and, hey, yo, dude, what's up? You know, he's going to, like, talk to you. It, there's no fellowship there. I've got a little hermit crab named Sam. Well, he's not so little anymore. He's been growing. Sam doesn't talk to me. There's no fellowship communion there. I mean, yeah, he's my pet, you know, all that. But, you know, he's a crab, so go back in your sand. We are made to have fellowship with God himself. The hunger that every single person on this planet that's been created, that hunger, that deep hunger, they don't know what they're hungry for, but can I tell you what it is? To have fellowship with God. To have nothing separating us from God. How do y'all, you you guys know what what it feels like when you go out and you sin. You do something you know you're not supposed to do. And then you wake up the next morning and you're like, well, I probably shouldn't have done that last night, but, well, I don't think I want to go to church on Sunday. That, yeah, I don't feel right. I just can't get into it. The reason is because sin separates us from God. That's why you don't feel comfortable coming in that you can't get into it or pull yourself into worship. The hunger in us is not going to be satisfied with drugs, alcohol, sex, and everything else out there. It's only going to be satisfied when you draw into God's presence. When you and we as a body decide to draw closer to him. Now, I know, I know most of you guys in here, most of you I've either sat in counseling with, had private conversations with, I'm not saying I know everything about you because I would be lying if I did. But I understand one thing. There's only one answer to it all. Randy said it. Jesus. When is the last time, and you don't have to raise your hands and tell me, but when is the last time that you sat down, put the cell phone away, turned the TV off, In your own little planet, now when you have kids, it's really hard. I'm with you, Rachel. In your own little planet and prayed, God, here I am, and that's it. Not asking him for anything, but just sitting in his presence and letting him speak to you. You know, sometimes he wants to say stuff too. He wants to minister to our spirit. How hungry are you for God? How hungry are you? Is it just, oh, let's come into church and we'll pray and sing and worship God? How hungry are you? Do you want an answer to your problem? Do you want to know what's going on? Are you ready to take the answer that God's got for you? Or are we just going to go in, oh, God, I'm being picked on. They said something again. Or are we going to God and saying, God, my feelings are hurt. God, heal my heart. There's a difference, folks. You don't, we don't walk into God's presence always asking and begging. and He's not on our leash. God, you do this. Good job, God. Oh, yeah, you know what? I saw this over here. God, you do this. Way to go. All right. Who are we to tell God what to do? When we petition God, it should be with a humble, contrite heart, not someone who's do this and do this, and then we go around living like crazy all, you know, all week long. Yeah, give you a tip on Sunday. Yeah, I'm at church, God. See there? Tiki. How hungry? I'm going to ask you that more than once. And let your ears and your heart, as Landy was saying, hear how hungry. I've got something in the crock pot at my house right now. Corned beef brisket. (sighs) Nobody's leaving yet. Just stay right here. Rice and green beans. How hungry are you? Ooh, if 
By the way, the cake I made the other day has got one piece left, and I have a feeling that Jonathan's going to nab it when I get home. Don't do it. You eat your lunch first, right? All right, everyone, open your Bibles to Exodus 33. Exodus 33. We're going to talk a little bit today. This is just continuing on what God's already started doing. We want God to work in us. We want God to use us. We want God to get those things out of us so that we can be better used for his glory. Amen? How many of you in here have ever heard of the Joshua generation? Okay. Some of us have actually grown up hearing that nonstop. You're going to be the Joshua generation that brings us into the promised land. The God's going to come back during your day. We've heard that. We've heard it a lot. Let me explain something to you about Joshua as we read through Exodus 33. Let's start off. Now, everyone there, Exodus 33, we're going to read this in the Amplified. The Lord said to Moses, depart, go up from here, you and the people whom you've brought from the land of Egypt to the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying to your descendants, I would give it to them. Verse 2, I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. I call them ites. They're all ites. I did a study on this one. Some of you might remember the teaching in Deuteronomy 7 on the ites in the land. And if you do your research and you look at the Greek, you know, the root words, every single one of them go back to a stronghold. A stronghold that we as humans allow in our lives. Hittites actually means fear. So here God was telling Moses, I'm going to send an angel out ahead of you and I'm going to take care of that fear. How about Amorites? I'm kind of jumping around because I have them in a different order in Deuteronomy. Amorites is pride and murmuring. I'm going to send an angel out ahead of you to take care of that thing inside of you. But are we yielding to God and letting him work and get that ite out of us? How about the Canaanites? Oh, boy. Traditions, traditions, traditions. Everything's got to be done a certain way. Don't have a woman come up here and preach. Everybody sit still. Do, you, know, don't, no, you can't you know, play in the church. But you've got to focus. You know, this traditional way and method of doing things that lock us in. It's what Pastor Bob was talking about on Wednesday about the laws being nailed and how the law is not, it, all the law does is expose sin. It does not save us. All right. How about the parasites? This one is like lack of commitment. How many of us come in and we have no commitment? Now, we, we might be committed this much. Well, we'll be here on Sunday. We'll come to Sunday school. We'll be here Wednesday night. But how committed are we to God? When someone comes up to you at work and says, oh, man, you wouldn't believe I just had this issue and I'm just really struggling. You're like, oh, I am so sorry. Tell me about it. They start telling you about it, and you're like, man, you know, wow. And they walk away. We never say, I'll pray for you. We never say, let me pray for you right now. How committed are we? Guess what? God will send his angel out to take care of that thing in you that hinders you from being committed to him. He'll take care of it. How about the Jebusites? Jebusites is oppression, heaviness uncleanness, all these ites he can wipe out of us if we would just let the word of God cut. If we let the word of God cut. If we get in his presence, being hungry for his presence. The, the lesson that I have today is actually called a people passionate for his presence. Let's step down to Exodus 33, verse 7. 33, verse 7. Now, this event took place right after the Israelites were out there with their golden calf, 
worshiping the golden calf. You know, we have Moses and, um, and his people and elders went up to the mountain. You remember Moses was going to be getting the Ten Commandments and some instructions on building the tabernacle. Well, when he left to go, you find out, and, and you don't have to turn there, but in Exodus 24 it says Moses and Joshua went up to the mountain of God. How many of you knew that? We all see, we all see Moses with his, you know, commandments and his instructions for the tabernacle, but guess what? The scripture says Moses and Joshua went up to the mountain of God when God gave Moses the directions. The elders stayed behind, but see, Joshua was Moses' servant, and the scripture references him being a young lad, probably a teenager or young man growing up. So here Joshua is familiar with Moses. He follows him everywhere he goes. Let's see what happens. Moses, of course, he comes down off the mountain and he finds out what happens and everyone's upset because they're getting ready to, let's just say that Moses told them that God was basically saying, you guys are stiff-necked. You went out there and worshiped this calf. I don't even know what I'm going to do with you at this point. I'll just take you in, Moses. We're going to leave these people here, basically. Well, here's what happened. Now Moses used to take his own tent, and he pitched it outside the camp, far off from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting of God with his own people. And everyone who sought the Lord went out to that temporary tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. That is not the tabernacle, folks. This is his tent that he put on the outside of the camp. This is separate from the whole tabernacle and its pieces and parts and furnishings. This is right before they built the tabernacle. Okay, so his tent's out there on the outside of the camp. Verse 8, when Moses went out to the tent of meeting, all the people rose and stood, every man at his tent door. They're watching Moses. They looked after him until he had gone into the tent. Now, they're all wondering, what is God speaking to him now? Because when he would go into the tent, look in verse 9. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the door of that tent, and the Lord would talk to Moses. The people knew something was going on because there was a pillar of cloud that came upon that tent door. Do people know something's going on with you because you've been in the presence of God? Do they see you and say, I wonder what God is speaking to them? Do they seek you out when they need prayer? Do they want to be closer to God in his presence so much that they're watching you and they're listening to what you have to say? As Christians, we're leaders in this world. We are leaders in this world. Amen? Let's look in verse 10. And all the people saw that pillar of cloud stand at the tent door, and all the people rose up and they started worshiping, every man at his own door. When folks see you seeking God and they see the presence of God on you, guess what? They're going to be worshiping too. They're going to see God on you. If we let the presence of God and the word of God change us from the inside out, you will hear me up here during worship a lot of times saying, God, it's all about you. It's not about me. There's none other like you. There's none other like him. He created you. He created those big old trees out there. He created everything you can see out there. The universe that you can't see, and we want to tell God, yo, God, I want you to do this with an attitude in our heart. Why aren't you doing that, God? Hello. All right. Let me stop there and keep, keep going in the scripture. Verse 11, and the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Moses returned to the camp, but let's read it together. His minister Joshua, son of Nun, 
a young man did not depart from the temporary prayer tent. What was Joshua hungry for? What was he looking for? Was he just a, okay, I'm just, you know, I'm going to follow Moses because I want to see what's up. What's going on in there? If that's all he was doing when Moses left the tent, guess what Joshua would have been doing? Right behind Moses. Where are you going, boss? Let's go. But that's not what he did. He stayed in the tent. He stayed in the presence of God because he was hungry. How hungry are we for change in our own lives? We think, okay, we're saved, and that's where it ends. But as Pastor Bob and Susan have taught us for years, it's not just what God has done for us, but what is he doing on the inside of us so that he can do a work through us? The greater, and this is important, this is not my notes, the greater amount of yourself that you submit to God will be the greater amount of yourself that God can flow through. The greater amount of yourself that you give to God is the greater amount that God can flow through. In other words, if I'm only giving him this much, that's all he can flow through. If I give him everything, my heart, God, correct me however you want to, bring any child, woman, adult, dog, cat, I don't care, bring it on. I want to be in your presence. I want to be right on with you, God. Now here's Joshua, a young man from the tribe of Ephraim. Remember there were 12 sons that inherited Israel. Ephraim was one of them. His name means fruitfulness. Here we have Joshua, the Joshua generation, going into the promised land. What were they going to do? They went into the promised land to rule and reign. To rule and reign over who? The ites, the enemy. To rule and reign. Now, yes, Jesus did a work on the cross. We have been given authority over every principality, demon, everything out there. That's already been done. However, there is a walking out of accomplishing and overcoming areas in our lives. Now, Joshua was a chosen leader, and, and in Exodus 17, it goes into the details of how Moses laid his hands on jo Joshua and sent him as that person to be in his stead whenever he was gone, that Joshua would take over, because at that point, God had told Moses, you're not going to the promised land. You know, way back when, when you were supposed to speak to the rock, you decided you were going to slam it with your stick because it didn't quite do, you know, you wanted to do it your way, and... Moses accepted it. He had to. He bowed down. This is it, God. Who's going to take over? Joshua became that person to take over. Moses is a, is a type in Scripture of Jesus bringing salvation to his people, taking them from Egypt into the promised land. So what's Joshua symbolic of? Hmm? The church... The church, the church who is going into take the land, we as a body. So when we look at Joshua, we find out in Joshua's life, and I challenge you to look him up and study him out, what is it about Joshua that made him successful? He stayed in the presence of God. He wasn't afraid to stay in that tent with God. He knew what God was capable of, but he wasn't afraid of God in that fear, oh, I can't get near him, but he wanted to know him. He had a healthy respect for God. How hungry are you? How hungry? If I told you you couldn't eat food for a week, all you could do is drink water because you know you're going to die if you don't drink water, but you can't eat food for a whole week. When it comes time to eat that food, 
after that week, I can guarantee you, you're going to forget your manners. You're going to forget to use your napkin. You are going to be eating because you are hungry. How vi vi vivacious, how much energy do we have? How, how much hunger do we really have for God? You know, I can talk till I'm blue in the face and say, oh, you're, you should be hungry for God. Oh, Lord, stir up the hunger inside of your people. But guess what? We have to realize first that there is a hunger that needs to be filled. And someone can tell us that, but until we realize it ourselves. So my prayer for this service and from ongoing is that the body of Christ would realize that we have a hunger and that hunger is to be for God because once we draw near to him, everything else flows out of that. Amen? The first time the word presence or God's presence is ever mentioned is in Genesis. Genesis 3, verse 8. And we can turn there. Genesis 3, verse 8. And they heard, who's they? Adam and Eve. They heard the voice of Jehovah God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They heard the voice of him walking in the day. And they heard the sound. They heard the sound. And see, this translation says they heard the voice of God walking. Guess what? Study to show yourselves approved. A workman. Don't just rely on the one Bible you have when you're seeking God. You need to have more than one translation so you get the fullness of what's going on. Oh, no, you're asking me to work, Michelle. I work enough. I got kids. I got a job. I got a house. I got a car. I got all the stuff I got to take care of. You're asking me to do what? Spend more time in the Word and not just one? You want me to have another Bible? Lord, have mercy. Hunger. Thirst after the word of God. It will refresh you every time. The Bible says that they hid themselves from the presence of Jehovah God in the middle of the trees of the garden. Oh, here he comes. They're hiding in the middle of the trees of the garden, folks. Why? Because they knew they had an area in their life that had to be dealt with because sin separates us from God. They became sin conscious. So they were hiding from the presence of God. The question I have for you today is, are you hiding from the presence of God? Do you get uncomfortable when someone's talking about the word of God when you're standing in the grocery store? Do you get uncomfortable when the presence of God comes in and you sense his presence and you know he's here? Do you want to run out the back door? Oh, no, wait, i got to go to the bathroom, right? Not that everyone that goes to the bathroom in the middle of worship has, you know, just to say. We get nervous sometimes if there's something going on. That's in one telltale sign that we need to get on our face before God. Amen? Now, there is, how shall I say it? When Moses left to go on to the mountain to seek the Lord, he was given instructions while he was in the presence of God on how to do something. The instructions that were given to Moses was not just the Ten Commandments, folks. It was instructions on how to build the tabernacle, the temple of God. Those instructions were not just on how to build the temple, but how to handle building of the furniture, how to build the priestly garments, what incense to use, all these details about how to build the temple of God. Are you the temple of God? We are the temple of God. Moses 
got instructions on how to build the temple while he was in God's presence. We struggle in our areas in our lives. Where are we going to get instruction on how to build this temple? How are we going to know how to overcome the areas we're dealing with in this temple? Spend time in God's word and in his presence. Don't be afraid to go to God. Take that time out. When we leave here, we all are going to do what? Eat. And how many of you are going to take a nap? I hope. <laughs> when, you're, when you're laying there trying to take your nap, take a moment and just say, Lord, give me a desire and a hunger for you that I've never had before. Never had before. If you're not hungry... It's not because you're really not hungry. It's because you don't realize you're hungry for something. Okay. Now, when I first came in, there were a couple of people that God showed me, and I have a word for a couple of people in here. Everybody open to that? Okay. Words of encouragement for many of you. Don't you try hiding behind Landy because you're the first one. Come on up here, hon. Yes, you. <laughs> He's like, wait a minute, I got someone behind me. Come on up, Elliot. Oh, praise God. Bring it on, brother. You know I'm your sister. Come on. God is doing something in you, and you know it. You know it. You're not afraid of his presence. He's going to overtake you. Someone needs to come up here with him. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Father, he is submitted to you, Father. His heart wants to know you more. He wants to hear you more. He wants to embrace you more. Oh, God, continue to stir that desire in him. And, Father, right now, in Jesus' name, allow your presence just to overflow him, Lord. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you for your presence, God. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Just as Joshua went into the promised land and God spoke to him, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For God himself goes ahead of you to prepare the way. Thank you, Father. Be of good courage. Not just be of courage. Be of good courage. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, all burdens go. All worries go. There's nothing to worry about. He is in God's hands 100%. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you for that fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Just refresh his body. Bring healing in every part of him, Father, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Everything in alignment with your word in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, when I, when I looked at you earlier, I just, I just saw God all over you. you you're, a little bit at a time, you're spending a little bit more time with him. A little bit more time, and it shows. I see it. You look different than the last time I saw you. You look different here, but I know you're different here, too. I can see it. So just know, God hears every word you say. And I'm not just up here preaching, oh yeah, God hears every word you say. He's listening to you. He's not taking what you have to say very lightly. He's taking it very serious because he's serious about you. And you need to know that. When I look at you, I see a man of God walking with the Lord, serving God, God will speak to you. You will hear things that other people won't hear. It'll be like a prophetic anointing on your life where you're going to see things. And it might disturb you sometimes. Like, Lord, have mercy the things I see. Oh, God. Because people with good discernment sometimes have a hard time being around a lot of things that they have to see.
but it's okay. You take a deep breath and you say, Father, it's me and you. And anytime you're in those situations, that's what you do. Father, it's me and you. And you can walk through anything with him. I'm just so blessed having you here today. <laughs> you're so awesome. You're so awesome. Oh. God has stirred a hunger in him for God, and he's going for it. He's a good example. You know, sometimes our, our fathers don't speak over us. Our fathers are supposed to speak over their children, you know. And many of our fathers didn't have that teaching. But I see, I see uh, influence. I see you have great influence. I see, mm -hmm. I see the Spirit of God on you. Mm -hmm. And you might say, <clears throat> well, I looked at the mirror this morning, and I didn't see it. But see, a spiritual man discerns, and, and, and I'm a spiritual man because I've given my life to Christ many years ago. And where some of the people are today, I was there many years ago. So I've walked through the valleys, I've walked through the difficulties, and all, all that time that I've walked, God has taught me and instilled in me His presence. And that's what God is doing mm -hmm. To his people today, through our difficulties, sometimes when everything goes well, we don't want to seek the Lord. See, I see God all over you, and I don't really know your past. Oh, I remember you cutting grass, and I remember over the years and all. But you've got you've got uh, uh, accountants, you've got mm -hmm. influence. Yes. And you, I want you to remember, you're going to be a vessel. A vessel carries something, and you're going to carry God. And, and the power will not be of the vessel, but it'll be of God. Yes. That's powerful. That's all you've got to think of. Don't even worry about the vessel. Just keep your mind on the Lord and draw nigh to him, and he will draw nigh to you. That's what the Bible says. <clears throat> but in our difficulties, sometimes we wonder, why do I have difficulties? I don't believe God put puts difficulties on us, but I tell you, when you get hungry, you're going to look for food. And let me tell you where you're going to find the food. <laughs> Desire the sincere milk of the Word of God, that therefore you might grow thereby. And God has told me that He wants you. And, and you know, you have a will, you can do it or not. But I just have to de de deliver the message. One of the most important things for a messenger is just to deliver the message. That's it. That's as far as we can go. That's what you did. That's what I'm doing. But God is saying, get into the book of Ephesians, mm -hmm. Galatians. Just concentrate on those books. Just, just read. Read a chapter one day. Read the same chapter the next day. In fact, I challenge you to read chapter 1 each day for a week, I'll guarantee you God's going to show up because God honors his word mm -hmm. above his name. That's right. And when we seek him, in a sense, we're seeking his word. But as we seek his word, guess who shows up? Mm -hmm. God. Powerful. Powerful. Now, I want to say something. You know you're saved. If you died right now, where would you go? That's right. Mm -hmm. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Now, all your sins have been forgiven. You've been born again. Birth, not, not birth by man, but birth by the Spirit of God. That's right. St. John uh, 12, uh, 1, 12 tells us that. So God is with you. He's for you. He's directing you. And he's empowering you. And as you get into the Word and seek Him, He's going to reveal Himself to you. Mm -hmm. And I'll guarantee you, you'll have time to eat, <laughs> go to the Golden Corral and eat, go to Mom's house and eat. You'll have time to cut the grass. You'll have time to do a lot of things. And I'm a testimony to that. I'm 80 years old, and I've seen God all my uh, Christian life, and I always have time to cut your grass and somebody else's grass. Is that not true? And do all the other things. And you know, it's amazing. God stretches your time. He does. When, you when you seek him, I've seen that in my life. 
in a day, I, uh, as I seek God, and the first thing in the morning, Susan and me do, we, we get up, we say, good morning, Holy Spirit. What do you want me to do today? Mm -hmm. And we start our day, and the steps of a righteous man are ordered to the Lord. You don't have to worry about anything. Right. Just walk with God, and God will open it up. That's right. I can go back in my life. I could go back in my life and give everybody uh, testimonies after testimonies how God has just led me to the right people, got the right job, called me into the ministry, and boy, called me to that right girl, and I married her. She married me. We've been married for 60 years. We had three kids, a whole bunch of grandchildren, great-grandchildren, a whole flock of people, and we are blessed of the Lord. Amen. I will say... This one right here, family, family, all family, is going to be speaking some things out that we need to hear, that we need to hear. And don't be afraid. We're all on your side. We're going to the same place you are. So, you know, don't be afraid to share what's on your heart because you'd be, you'd be surprised how God will use you to help bring life to other people. I'm looking forward to what the words coming out of your mouth, brother. <laughs> you. In Love season. You, Amen. A word in Amen. season. Amen. Justine, Amen. can you come here, please, ma'am? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't have an old rubber snake up here like Floyd tried to spook you out that time. <laughs> I love you. You've been so faithful day in, day out. Every day, every year, every time, <laughs> you have just been faithful. Oh, Lord. Yes. And Amen. God has not forgotten you. Yes, he and he has been working in the background, doing some things, getting some things ready and prepared for you, honey. It's not always going to be like this. It's not always going to be like this, okay? And I believe without a shadow of a doubt, as sure as I'm standing here, that God has put more of a hunger for him on the inside of you. You know, I, I kind of get where I'm doing my, my thing. You know, I did that for a couple years where I just kind of had, had my kids, and now I have to change diapers, and now I have to do this and that. And I, you get into that mode as a mom, yeah. and then at some time, it's like, wait a minute. You know, sure, I'm going to church and praying, but wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a little hungry. Mm -hmm. yep. And now is your time. I see you stepping forward. I've seen God use you to deliver people with just a few words. Yeah. I've seen them totally transformed by the power of God on the inside of you. Just because you're older doesn't mean God ain't going to use you. You're just getting started. I delivered a word to a, a church, uh, a Baptist church, had an opportunity to meet with some elderly folks. I was asked to come in. I said, oh, boy, what am I supposed to speak on, Lord? These people know more than I do, can probably quote scripture left and right. And you know what he told me to tell them? You're not retired. <laughs> we think when we get older that we've done what we needed to do. We've raised our babies. We can relax. <laughs> We can relax and kick back, but guess what? When I say you're not retired, that doesn't mean that you got, oh, I got more to do. It's a blessing. It's a wonderful thing because God's not finished using you. And when I say using you, you know what I mean. He wants to bless you. He's got that whole concept, pray for one another that you may be healed. Well, guess what? As you minister to other people, you get your own healing. As we reach out to others, it comes back to you. So the more you're hungry for God, guess what? God's coming towards you. It's that principle. Yeah, it's that absolutely. principle. I just so Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for Justine. Father, right now, I thank you for that hunger that you've planted on the inside of her for you. Father, I pray for a fresh stirring of your spirit inside her body, Father, inside her mind and spirit. In Jesus' name, Father, help her to see herself as you see her, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank you for your presence. Thank you for the giftings and the calling and the anointing of God on her life. And I thank you, Father, that you aren't finished with her yet, that you've got something absolutely amazing in store. Thank you, Father, for her faithfulness. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.
You are a blessing to me. Yes. Girl. I want to say something about you. Uh, Justine. There's times when, uh, of course, I had my neck operated on and all the other stuff that I thing. had to be operated on. And uh, I wouldn't let the Lord take it out, so the doctor had to take it out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You. <laughs> <laughs> so you better let the Lord take it out. Okay. But, you know, Susan would call Justine and the nursery and different things like that. And, uh, you know, it's just, not, it's not a matter when somebody does, you know, it's, we are always thankful that somebody's doing something, but the attitude that they mm. have, and it was Christ-like attitude that she had, that she said, yeah, go ahead, Susan, I'll take care of it. You don't have to worry about it. And so she took care of the nursery, and of course, with all you guys helping and everything, but she had the main responsibility to see that it was covered. And that means a lot to Susan with those kids because she, I, I think she loves those kids better than she loves me. I'm getting <laughs> jealous, I tell you. <laughs> I just get, but, uh, but see, that means something. That speaks, sometimes your attitude speaks better than what you are saying or doing. Somebody say, ouch. I have, to, I have to say, ouch. it's okay to say, ouch. We're all this, how many of you know we're all from the same stump? stump at him. But I, I've known this young woman for many, many years, and she's always has blessed us. And on just a little on the sideline, if you need a cake, to, <laughs> it don't come no the better than Justine's cake. Anyway, let's get on back on, the, on this. Side. But you're a blessing. You know, and your kids are a blessing. You are, you're a blessing because you love the Lord. You're a, you're, you are a, oh my goodness, I know. you are a worshiper. You are the one that seeks the Lord. Yes. Uh, you have great power in the heavens. Mm -hmm. Great power in the heavens. Mm -hmm. And when you pray, God hears and your spirit is released That's in right. the power of the Holy in Ghost, Jesus pushing name. back principalities Thank and you, powers. Lord. The Lord says, don't worry Lord. about your children. Your right. children is the, in the Amen. hands of God. And who can take your children out That's of the right. hands of God? Woo! Nobody and Nobody. nothing. My daughter, continue Thank to be God. faithful. I am strengthened in you right now. Jesus I'm strengthening you right this minute in the name of Jesus. The areas of tardness. Lord, I thank you. All tardness goes, fatigue goes, and strength floods her soul. Joy floods her soul. And Father, I thank you, Lord. She is a worshiper, a praiser, and someone that loves you and loves people. And I thank you for her life and what she means to every person in this assembly. In Jesus' name, Thank you, Lord. amen. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Glory. Blessing. Blessing. Oh, my goodness. Now, I know it's eight minutes after, as I'm looking at the clock up there, eight minutes after one. Um, I, will, I do want to encourage, encourage Rick without, you know, like doing all the fanfare, but I do want to say I was in tears talking to your daughter this week about the word you gave. And I told her, I know a lot of teachers, the way you minister and the way you present things. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Look around you. You are a phenomenal, not just, oh, you're a good teacher. You are a phenomenal teacher. You, you give out, you're up here for this long, and your point is made. And that stays with us a long time. We can get up here and we preach from here to there. And they say, oh, yeah, I remember that one thing she said. We're, we're to be hungry for God. But they remember every word that comes out of your mouth because the anointing of God is on you. You are humble before him. You let him use you. You let him use your life as an example. There is no shame in that. that uh, we honor you with the gifting and calling of God in your life. And I look forward when you come up here and you speak. Every time I find out you're teaching, I want to be here. All of us in our giftings, there's not one better than another. We're all in the same body, and we encourage each other. We honor each other. We bless each other. I'm your shepherd. And sometimes, you know, I come in, chop, 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 chop. 
How many of you know sometimes we need chop, chop, chop? Now, I'm not talking about pork Amen. chops here now. I'm talking about. <laughs> not that you're hungry or anything, but, right? Yeah, but Rick comes as a father. Yes, he does. When he comes up here, he talks as a father. He's a father. Is he not a father? Is he not a father? He's a father, and there's mama. Yes. Put the right woman with the right man. But when Rick speaks, it's daddy speaking. Mm -hmm. Wisdom. Wisdom, Rick. Very much. Easy to entreat. Blessing. Yes. Wow. That's and you know, amazing. there's more there than we realize. Uh huh. And I'll guarantee you it's coming out more and more. Now, Sometimes I don't like to, yeah, amen, it, I know it's, we're it's, le it's leaking out, okay, <laughs> and we're going to get the benefit of that. Now, sometimes I don't like to, uh, I, I, I want to praise everybody, but sometimes if you praise somebody, then oh, somebody else. Oh, my feelings else, are hurt. You didn't have we grown to that maturity that yes. we prefer praise our God. brother over yes. ourselves? Thank you. Uh, I mean, I could, I could talk about uh, Frank, I could Absolutely. talk about Charles, to talk about Bill, Michelle, Floyd, all of us, Roy, everybody I could talk about mm -hmm. because all of us have God in us. And God expresses himself through our personality. Mm -hmm. So whatever personality God has blessed you with, just let God arise. And you may look a foolish in front of everybody, but it doesn't matter. Somebody's okay. a fool for somebody. I'd rather be a fool for God. That's so in right. your personality, in your sweetness, because all of us are really given an aspect of the glory of God. Look about you, and you'll see the glory of Amen. God. And every one of us has a, 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 an aspect of that diamond, mm -hmm. that shining glory of God. And when you speak, it's God through your personality, through what God has caused you to be. It's God, it's God, it's God in Tennessee, <laughs> it's God in Hannah Han, it's God in you and me. It's God, it's God, it's God in New York, it's God in California, it's God in you, it's God in you, it's God in you, it's God in you, and it's God in you, 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 you us all. It's God, it's God, it's God, it's God, it's God, it's God. It's God in me. It's God in you. It's all about Jesus. Give him a shout. Woo. Amen. We know it's getting late. Let's go ahead and we're going to close in prayer. If anyone needs prayer, if you're hungry for God, you just want a fresh infilling, whatever you want, I don't mind locking up the doors. So if y'all need prayer, come on up afterwards. I'll be happy to pray for you. All right. Father, we just thank you for this time together. Father, we thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for it, Father. We pray, Father, that you will help us to be even more hungry for you, Lord, that we will realize that the true hunger we have is truly you, and only you can satisfy, God. Only you can satisfy what we're looking for, Lord. I thank you, Father, for my brothers and sisters. I pray that they be refreshed today as they go eat, as they go nap as they rest and read your word and just embrace you, Father, I pray that you will refresh them in your presence and in your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.